IBW crowns its first ever Junior Heavyweight Champion! Your opening contest is a quarter-final match in the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Introducing first, representing IPW, Chris Ridgway! And what a way to start things out on this one-night single elimination eight-man tournament, Chris Ridgway. Ridgeway's got to be one of the absolute favourites going into this. But what a first round draw he has against a three-time GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion. This match could steal the show at the very first time of asking. As Ridgeway paces up and down, awaiting his opponent. And his opponent, representing Pro Wrestling Noah, Daisuke Harada! Daisuke Harada, a 13-year veteran from Osaka in Japan. This is going to be a hell of a match, as I said. Dave Bradshaw here on commentary, sitting in for Ricky Slatter tonight. As we prepare to get things underway, ribbons being thrown from the audience. Raucous crowd here tonight in Milton Keynes. As Harada and Ridgeway get ready to start things out here. Of course, both of these men will have in the back of their head that if they're going to win this tournament, they may have to wrestle three times tonight. So it's not just about whether they can win this first match here. It's all about conserving energy as well as the bell rings. Ridgeway and Harada tie up. Ridgeway goes behind with the rear waist lock. Harada with the wrist lock. Just feeling each other out here are Ridgeway and Harada. Drop toe hold from Ridgeway. Ridgeway is going to try and assert his dominance here in the early going with some mat wrestling. One of the bigger challenges in Ridgeway's IPW career tonight. And Ridgeway still trying to get back on track here in IPW after losing that world title opportunity to Kip Sabian at Undisputed 2 before Christmas. Harada taking control here. Ridgeway's going to roll backwards. He's got Harada's shoulders to the canvas for a two count. And Ridgeway with his foot on the ropes to force the break. As I mentioned, Harada, a three time and current GHC junior heavyweight champion. Across those three title reigns, he's now approaching 700 days. Having held that championship during his career. Can they look up? Harada takes control this time. It's a championship that's been held by the likes of Daniel Bryan, Hideo Itami, Jushin Thunder Liger, Marafuji as well. So many of the great junior heavyweight names in pro wrestling have held that GHC championship. And we are starting a new tradition tonight here in Milton Keynes as we look forward to crowning the inaugural IPW junior, junior heavyweight champion. Ridgeway this time with the side headlock. Ridgeway goes to the ropes. And shoulder block sends Harada down. And Harada a little bit frustrated. Ridgeway is able to hold his own here. Now the battle of strikes between these two. Big elbow right into the jaw from Harada. Harada will go to the ropes. And shoulder block sends Ridgeway down. Very interesting backgrounds for both of these two guys. Harada was a high school amateur wrestling champion. Of course, Ridgeway has that background in mixed martial arts. It's Harada with Ridgeway in the corner here. 
And Harada just, you sense, slowing the pace down somewhat. He sends Ridgeway to the brakes. Ridgeway puts the brakes on, kicks Harada, not once but twice, three times in the left thigh. And Ridgeway, a dragon screw takedown. Harada in danger of having his knee taken out of its socket there. Ridgeway not going to give Harada any time to recover, wants to capitalize on what may be some damage done to that knee. There's those kicks of Ridgeway that have led to so much success here in IPW and across British wrestling. He gets for a side press and gets a, a two count. Ridgeway now trying to force a submission. Look at him twisting the ankle and now applying all of his body weight. Got that left arm wrapped around the chin of Harada. Daisuke Harada, one of four wrestlers here tonight representing pro wrestling Noah. I'm sure he would consider it a humiliation as perhaps the most successful of those four if he was to crash out here in the first round. There's definitely been some damage done to that left knee of Harada. You saw him trying to get some blood flow back around when he was given a, a chance there. Ridgeway. Again with the kicks, and Harada with a defiant roar fighting back, and now the forearms being exchanged again. Ridgeway taking advantage of this exchange, and Harada collapses in the corner. And things very much going the way of Chris Ridgeway at the moment. Ridgeway now looking for the vertical suplex. Harada adjusting his body weight to counter. Ridgeway persistent, those clubs across the back, he'll try again, this time Harada goes up but lands on his feet behind Ridgeway, Ridgeway with the elbow, Harada catches him, big overhead belly to belly suplex by Daisuke Harada. This match is opening quarter final match, everything it promised to be it's been very back and forth momentum swinging one way and the next but Harada looking to make that definitive move here as he picks up a head of steam sends Ridgeway down and Harada with a slightly more confident look on his face now as he's able to do that as the Northern Lights to cover with the bridge and referee Tom Scarborough gets to two before the kick out Once again, pacing themselves, obviously a consideration here for both of these guys. As I said at the start, the winner potentially having to wrestle twice more if they want to leave Milton Keynes tonight as the inaugural IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. Ridgeway grabbing that left arm, trying to hyperextend the elbow. Morado was able to roll through Ridgeway, going back to his feet with those quick strikes again. That one into the side of the head. Harada may be out, Ridgeway to advance to the semi-finals and a kick out at the last possible moment by Daisuke Harada. Ridgeway looking a little bit frustrated there, can't quite believe that, that was only a two count, but two count it was. Ridgeway's going to have to adapt his plan here. Right forearm, the point of the elbow, in fact, I think went into the face of Ridgeway. Oh my God, listen to those kicks again. Even someone as accomplished in the junior heavyweight division of pro wrestling know as Harada struggling to hang with Chris Ridgeway when it comes to strikes. Ridgeway again with those forearms. So quick with the strikes, it's Ridgeway goes to the ropes again. Hip toss attempt from Harada in City. Kicks him right in the head. Ridgeway with the leg sweep. Oh my god, a PK from Ridgeway. Harada straight up to his feet though. Harada going behind, he's looking for that German suplex that he uses to put so many opponents away. Hang on a second, the shoulder's down and a kick out by Ridgeway. Ridgeway nearly taken by surprise. Ridgeway with the ankle lock. Ridgeway looking for the ankle lock. Harada knows he's in trouble. Harada scrambling to get to the bottom rope. 
Ridgeway's got him right in the middle of the ring here. Ridgeway adjusting with German suplex of his own. As Ridgeway back on the heel into the cranium of Harada for the cover and Ridgeway somehow does not get it done. Harada kicks out on two and a half. Well, the look on the face of Ridgeway now says it all. What more do I have to do to put away this three-time GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion? Ridgeway will pick him up again. Again with the kicks. Harada on jelly legs here. But refusing to go down. Despite the increasing ferocity of those kicks, this time he grabs Ridgeway. Smashes him right in the knee, forearm, into the abdomen from Harada. Maybe looking for that German suplex again. This time Ridgeway rolls through, looking for a victory roll. Ridgeway trying to grab the ropes. And Ridgeway was able to escape from that Katayama German suplex. Ridgeway with the ropes again. Another victory roll. And did he get it all? He led back. Harada led back and Harada picks up the win over Chris Ridgeway. Here is your winner, advancing to the semi-finals, Daisuke Harada. A huge win in hostile territory for Daisuke Harada, who now goes on to the semi-finals where he'll face the winner of the Hayata Kid Lycos match Coming up a little bit later on, what an opening match here. Ridgeway looks furious here. Livid at himself, I think, at another defeat after that world title opportunity went begging at Unstoppable. Excuse me, at Undisputed, I should say. Beg your pardon. Ridgeway, though. The oh my god, I thought Ridgeway was being sporting. Ridgeway, clubbing strikes right into Harada, for goodness sake, the match is over, Ridgeway, showing his true colours here it seems, like Ridgeway's going under the ring, what's he looking for? Well Ridgeway, rather than taking this defeat gracefully, he's got a, a steel chair, what's he, oh, come on, Harada's got potentially two more matches to fight here, hang on, wait a second now, well, that's finally been, been broken up. Ridgeway and Kip Sabian's come out here. Sabian, of course, the man who, who uh, defeated Ridgeway at Undisputed. Sabian coming to the aid here of Harada. Sabian himself now a former world champion. And Sabian gonna help Harada to his feet here, I think. Sabian may well have saved the tournament chances of Daisuke Harada, who advances to the semi-finals of the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. All right, so Harada moves on. We are going to keep the action coming here. Our second quarter final match on the way in just a moment. Yohei going to go one on one with Ben Basden for a place in the last four of this prestigious tournament tonight in Milton Keynes. Let's take it to the ring and get things started. The following contest is a quarter-final match in the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Introducing first, representing IPW, Ben Basden. The 
this is the first time I've seen Ben Baston live, but you can tell just by looking at him, an angry young man indeed is Ben Basden, but certainly not a young man lacking in self-confidence. Ben Basden with a huge opportunity in what is still his rookie year here in IPW. Unimpressed by the uh, the theatrics here from the crowd, with the again those ribbons being thrown in to welcome Yohei here to Milton Keynes. Well, if you're a long-time fan of IPW, you'll you'll know that. Ben Basson, until recently, had, had long hair, recently shaved it, shaved it off, which I think has made him look even more intimidating. <laughs> Yohei may be playing some uh, mind games with this youngster, Basden, as we get started out. Basden not having any of it. Big shove sends Yohei to the ropes. Big leapfrog, though, from this... Man from Kyoto, very charismatic young man is uh, Yohei. <laughs> Yohei with a background in various sports, kung fu, baseball, football, soccer, judo. No! Basden. Clearly not in any sense overawed by the occasion as he's taking control of that side headlock. Basden now goes to the ropes. Shoulder block though. Sends Yohei down. And Basden with a little bit of trash talk for Yohei as well. Grabs the leg. Great stuff from Basden. Basden looking for the ankle lock. And Yohei scrambling to the bottom rope with a, a smile on his face. Basden came out here trying to look confident, whether he was or not. He's certainly gaining in authentic confidence here as this one goes on. Trying to grab the leg that time, maybe a little bit rash from Basden. Yohei, got control with Basden by the head snapmare. Will take down this youngster, part of the uh, graduate from the IPW Academy is Basden. But he, a kick to the side of his head, he won't even know his name, let alone his wrestling school after that, a kick out on two. Keeps this young man in it. <laughs> Yohei here, trying to regain control, but Basden with some Ridgeway-esque kicks. So Yohei sends him down. And Yohei ever fun-loving, but he's quickly having that fun knocked out of him by Basden and in fact Yohei is 
going to have to roll to the outside again. Still putting on a show, but make no mistake about it, he is hurting here. Very interesting past year or so for Yohei in pro wrestling Noah. He was a part of a, a stable with uh, all four of or all three of the other guys from pro wrestling Noah who are here tonight, but very recently deciding to go out on his own. So he's here without backup. And his feet hit the ropes, they're looking to, for a bit of showmanship. Maybe a slightly smaller ring than Yohei is used to. Yohei doesn't seem to have been knocked out of his stride by that. Yohei climbing to the top floor. And Yohei with the drop kick. Takes Basden down. Has he knocked the wind out of Basden? Well, the youngster was able to kick out on two and keep his tournament chances alive. Yohei looking to take Basden down. German suplex with the release from Basden. Landed right on his head, did Yohei. Forearm smashed right in the ear. The really intensity in the eyes of young Ben Basden. Oh my God, what a chop! And Basden didn't go down! Yohei is going to allow Basden the chance to hit with one of his own. Yohei felt that one too. Oh my God. You saw the shockwaves rippling over the skin of Basden. Basden again doing some damage with those chops. Basden deciding he's had enough of that little contest. He's going to change gear here. Go to the road, but he got drop kicked in the face for his troubles. Yohei, cover with all his weight down on the shoulders and Bazan had to expend a huge amount of energy to kick out there. Yohei got Bazan up. Bazan wriggling free. And Bazan, and PK, the cover by... Oh, did he get him? No, 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 no. Two and nine tenths for Bazan. This would have to be considered an upset if Basden was to beat Yohei. Look at that variation on the ankle lock. Look at the angle of that ankle of Yohei. Contorting that joint. Yohei trying to get to the rope. He hasn't got a grip on the bottom rope. Referee is not going to call for the rope break on that basis. Instead, Basden able to counter the pin attempt by... Yohei, they are scrambling all over the canvas. Oh, Basden got it! Basden got him! Ben Basden upsets Yohei! Here is your winner, advancing to the semi finals, Ben Basden! Talk about a shock, Ben Basden, in his rookie year here in IPW, defeating Yohei. Basden now going to advance to face the winner of the James Castle Tadasuke match. Another one of our quarterfinals that's coming up. Basden getting in uh, my face there as he leaves, but you think he'd be happy about winning the match, but apparently not. Anyway, Yohei still enjoying the applause. What a match that was. What a surprise. Ben Basden advancing to the semi-finals. Well, we are going to switch gears here, take a, a few moments off from our quarter-finals of that IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Right now, an eight-man tag team match here, live in Milton Keynes. Thank you. 
the following contest is an eight-man tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first the team of LJ Cleary, Nathan Martin and Darren Kearney. Collective they are more than hype and they are joined by Dan McGee. All right, a interesting team here. More than hype being joined by Dan McGee for what is going to be an eight-man tag team match. Well, what an exciting foursome this is going to be. Chris Brooks, Connor Mills, Maverick Mayhew, Curtis Chapman. Four of the most exciting talents here in IPW. We are here in Unit 9, Milton Keynes. A pretty intimate venue. This one could spill all over here. In fact, it already is. Mayhew already thrown to the outside. And it's Chris Brooks who's going to be the early victim here of more than hype the bell hadn't even rung now it does and Nathan Martin going for the early cover on Brooks Cleary getting involved early on LJ Cleary's not legal Nathan Martin is he's three young men from Ireland more than hype clearly looking to take an early degree of control here. Well, all three are more than hyper in there. They didn't all tag in, did they? I'll tell you what, referee has got his hands full here. McGee in there as well. I think they think it's a photo op. This is... Referee Tom Scarborough's worst nightmare, trying to keep six of these guys out of the ring. Just the legal man from both teams supposed to be in there. That's LJ Cleary in there with Brooks now. Oh, Brooks with the leaping senton splash across the bent over Cleary. And Brooks, the tag to Mayhew. Mayhew, double cross body. Takes down two thirds of more than hype. Mayhew charging from one corner to another. Hurricane Rana! Maverick Mayhew taking matters into his own hands here, but here comes Dan McGee. M McGee! Puts him down with the back elbow. Now, comes Mills. Oh God, Mills! Wow! Took down, what, four or five men on that very small area on the outside of the ring. Now look! Look on that top turnbuckle, Curtis Chapman! Looking to take the skies as well, and he does! Absolute chaos at ringside here in Milton Keynes! Well, who's, I'm not sure who the legal man is here. It's a chop from Martin. Martin with a half Nelson into the suplex. Brooks. Oh my. From that hangman position. Twisting neck breaker. Here comes a member of more than hype. That one is Darren Kearney. Mills was in there. Kearney with a super kick with authority to Mills. Made a great counter from Mills there on Kearney. Here comes 
LJ Cleary, what a lung blower! My God, the action has been high octane here, thick and fast. Maverick Mayhew on Cleary. Brain buster by Mayhew. Dan McGee looking for a pump handle. Slam! Oh, he got him right in the head. A knee to Mayhew right in the skull. He's going to look for a tombstone pile driver, is he? It's McGee! Innovative offense there from McGee! And got broken up by Connor Mills, but Mills may have done more damage to, to Chapman than he did to McGee. Well, Mills is legal for his team. I think we're going to assume it's McGee their opponents that seems to be the way this has settled down here I use the word settle down loosely because the action still coming at a million miles an hour Comes Mills into the corner this time McGee gets out of the way but he took a lot of punishment there here comes Kearney Kearney with the knee right into the, the midsection running uppercut from Martin one from McGee and Cleary who gets caught Mills now top turnbuckle double super kick from more than hype. What is this from more than hype? Oh my god! What triple team action from more than hype. They're all piling on! And it got broken up again. At the very last moment. Bodies strewn everywhere here in Unit 9. Clear he's gonna continue to take the fight here to Mills. They're on their knees here, exchanging strikes, and it's Cleary who's first to his feet. Cleary will go to the ropes. Collision there, and nothing pretty about that offense, but it's certainly effective for LJ Cleary. Mills protecting himself by getting that boot up, and now the front face hole looking for a suplex, maybe. There's a counter from Cleary. Mills only right on his jaw, but oh my. Leaping over the top rope with a Ace crusher there was Chris Brooks, the double knees from Mayhew. What, is, what are they doing here? Curtis Chapman! Spinning move that dropped him on his head, the mega driver, and he got him! Curtis Chapman picks up the win! Here are your winners, the team of Connor Mills, Maverick Mayhew, Chris Brooks, Curtis Chapman! It is a move that Curtis Chapman has used to put away many opponents, but a variation on that, the assisted version. Thanks to his teammates here, and what we promised an all-action eight-man tag team match, it certainly delivered on that. Your winners are Chris Brooks, Connor Mills, Maverick Mayhew, and Curtis Chapman. Great stuff here in Milton Keynes on a night when we are going to make history with the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. But right now, Brooks, Mills, Mayhew, Chapman, your winners. But right now, we are going to take things back to the third quarter final in our Junior Heavyweight Championship tournament, the Anarchist. James Castle about to go one on one with Tarasque. The following contest is a quarter-final match in the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Introducing first, representing Pro Wrestling Noah, Tadasuke! Well, very happy birthday to Tadasuke, just turned 33 two days ago. 
is a 12-year veteran of professional wrestling. As he enters his 13th year, he would like nothing more than to be the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. If he's going to do it, he's going to have to get past one of the IPW fans' absolute favourites. The Anarchist, James Castle, who I know believes that this is a huge, huge chance for him as well. We know that Castle has been embroiled in an ongoing feud with the product David Starr here in IPW. Both of them have had wins against each other. They were going to have a rubber match, I guess, at Undisputed just before Christmas. It was going to be a two out of three falls match. Star was injured, and that match was unable to take place, which further enraged the already short-tempered James Castle. Bell rings, we are underway in this third quarter final. In this single night, eight-man elimination tournament, one of the most grueling feats in all of wrestling to win a tournament of this kind with so little recovery time. As these two feel each other out here. Ben Basden awaiting the winner of this one in the semi-finals later on tonight. I don't know if you're Ben Basden, who you would rather face here, because on one hand, he probably is more familiar with James Castle. Of course, both of them part of IPW, so that would make sense. But on the other hand, having just had a victory over pro wrestling Noah's Yohei, maybe Basden thinks he has the, the number of these, this visiting contingent from Noah. Daske offering the handshake. Castle not sure whether to accept that. And Tadaske turned out wasn't making a genuine offer in the first place. What a support here for Castle as you'd expect. Big kick right around the back of the head from Castle who takes out the left knee of Tadaske. Tedeschi only just meets the uh, the weight limit here for a junior heavyweight tournament at just around 200 pounds. Castle with the drop kick takes all 200 of those pounds off their feet. It's Tedeschi down in the corner. Castle trying to stomp a hole in the chest of of Tedeschi. Rolls him back into the middle of the ring. Goes for the cover and gets two. Very interesting potential dynamic here if Tadaske was to get through here. I mentioned it earlier, but he is very much allied with the other members of Pro Wrestling Noah who are here. Harada and Hayata. If Tadaske with Castle on the outside. Looking to Try and gain some kind of advantage outside of the ring. But of course, the match cannot be won outside the ring other than by count out. If you want a pinfall or submission, he's going to have to get Castle back in there. Castle sent face first, my goodness, right into that ring post. Tadaske has had plenty of honors in his career of this. Over these past dozen years or so, he's a former Osaka Pro Wrestling Champion. He won Shikara's Young Lions Cup in 2011. So no stranger to tournament wrestling. So 
Tedesco grabbing that mohawk of Castle. Well, I guess counts as pulling the hair. Referee giving him a count of five to make the break. Tedesco using as much of it as he can. Castle been enraged by that. Don't touch the mohawk. Castle inverted atomic drop to uh, quell his momentum by Tadaska. There's a DDT. Tadaska very much in control. I don't know. That was a, a judgment call by the referee. Castle's shoulders almost down for the full three seconds there. Tadaska trying to get under the skin here of of Castle, Castle gasping for air. And you can see Tedesco, you can hear this, he has largely taken this crowd here in Milton Keynes out of this by dominating large portions of this match. Castle trying to gain an advantage now as these two exchange strikes with a disrespectful slap from Tedesco. Look at that look. Castle now unloading his right elbows. A slap of his own for Castle. Bicycle kick attempt from Tadaske. The leg got caught. There's a knee right into the jaw from Castle. Castle catches him, scoops him up to a Michinoku driver. The cover. And he did get him. No, another very, very close near fall. This time it was Tadaske who was a split second away from elimination. A very physical quarter-final encounter here. As Castle goes charging in. Basque, a knee right into the jaw. I'm not sure if Castle has any idea where he is. Tadaske. With Castle on his shoulders, catches him. The cover from Tadaske to advance. And a kick out again from Castle. Tadaske believes he is about to end it here against the anarchist. Tadaske, big lariat. Goodness me, what a cover, that's got to do it! Huge close, a huge lariat there from Tadaske. Such a hard hitter is Tadaske, but Castle, to his credit, has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with him here. Going to get him in that torture rack position. Looking for the outcast. He calls it, but instead Castle's caught him. Castle may have knocked him out. He did, he did, he got him. Castle, your winner. Here is your winner, advancing to the semi-finals, James Castle. And so it will be an all IPW semi-final. Later on, James Castle and Ben Baston. One of them is going to the tournament finals with a chance to be the IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. A big come from behind win for James Castle over Tadaske. And I guess that is one win out of three only for the Pro Wrestling Noah guys. Well, we are getting ready now for our fourth and final quarterfinal match. The last two men to enter this eight man single night tournament for the Junior Heavyweight Championships, Hayata from Pro Wrestling Noah about to go one-on-one -on -one with IPW's Kid Lycos.
The following contest is a quarter-final match in the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Introducing first, accompanied by Chris Brooks, representing IPW, Kid Lycos! A welcome return to IPW for Kid Lycos. Of course, part of CCK and with Chris Brooks, who's already had a very successful evening in his own right. Brooks accompanying Lycos here. Lycos, of course, spent much of 2018 plagued by injury. He is hoping that this new year will be a very different proposition, a much luckier one for Kid Lycos. But he faces a very steep challenge if indeed his 2019 is going to get off to a flyer because this opponent from Pro Wrestling Noah, one of the most accomplished junior heavyweights on this planet. And his opponent, representing Pro Wrestling Noah, Hayata! We talked about Harada earlier, who had a who is a three-time GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion. That is a, a championship that has also been held by Hayata for a month or so back in the spring of 2017. He also held tag team championships in Pro Wrestling Noah and in Osaka Pro Wrestling with Yohei and Tadasuke respectively, two men of course who we've already seen. We started tonight with eight men vying for that Junior Heavyweight Championship. We are down to five, and in just a few moments here, we will be down to four. The last quarter final in this single night tournament. About to get underway, referee Tom Scarborough calls for the bell, and we are off. Look at that look in the eyes of Hayata. He's been doing this for 12 and a half years. He certainly knows his way around a wrestling ring. He's competed all around the world. Lycos with the counter to the rear waist lock. It's a wrist lock from Hayata. Lycos trying to wriggle his way free. Sweeps the legs, finally. He's going to try and Pin him down here with that head lock instead as a, a counter. Front face lock for Hayata and it's Lycos' turn to, to counter now. First time to my knowledge certainly that these two have been in the ring with each other. You get the sense very much that there is a, a cautious start from both men. They face an unfamiliar opponent. Back to square one. Hayata will sweep the leg. From Cartwheel from Hayata. High leg lariat from Lycos who kipped back up. Kid Lycos. Starting to get back into his stride here. No signs of ring rust after that prolonged time on the shelf for Lycos. Lycos. Takes him down by the head and he's going to try and attempt some kind of submission here. Look at the, what he's doing to that left arm. Stretching out Hayata, who is actually quite near the ropes, but I'm not sure from his position if he's got any way of adjusting those limbs to get there. With the position of the neck, you see what he's trying to do with the leg and finally he's able to do so. That's probably the only way out there for Hayata. Lycos looking to capitalize while he has the upper hand here. Send Hayata to the ropes. Takes him down. Lycos having things very much his own way at the moment of the two count. And could have been more than that if Lycos had hooked the leg. Hayata into the corner. Lycos going to follow him in. The missile drop kick. 
Hayato, and that might buy this man from Hiroshima a bit of time. Lykos with the wind knocked out of him. Face first into the turnbuckle. Now Hayato looking to just knock all the energy out of Kid Lykos. Again, using all of that five count before making the break. Chris Brooks, of course, still at ringside, trying to offer advice to his longtime tag team partner. Lycos has definitely had some of the uh, air taken out of his sails from that recent onslaught. And that'll do some more big scoop slam from Hayata. Now again, trying to wear him down. Hayata as he looks to become the fourth man in the semi-finals here of this Junior Heavyweight Championship tournament. By the way, if you want to join that conversation on social media, let us know who you think is going to walk out of here, out of Milton Keynes tonight as the inaugural Junior Heavyweight Champion. Use the hashtag on social media, hashtag IPW, to join the conversation. Ayata wrenching at the mask of Lycos. Ayata clearly has done his homework here on Lycos. He's very much aware that if you give Lycos a chance to up the pace, to use some of that aerial ability, then things can go downhill very quickly for your chances against Kid Lycos. So he's been trying to slow him down. But Lycos, not having any of it. May not have an opportunity though, Hayato imposing his will here. And now Lycos struggling to retain consciousness, a vice-like grip around the, the chin, possibly around the throat there by Hayato, referee deeming that that's legal. But the foot of Kid Lycos is on the ropes and that's going to force the break. Hayata, the snap mare goes to the ropes here. Hayata, oh my! Big kick right into the top of the skull of Kid Lycos to go to the semis. And Lycos somehow finds a way to hang in there. Again, Harada, Basden, Castle already in the semi finals. Will it be Hayata or Kid Lycos who will be the final piece of that semi final puzzle? Lycos trying to survive here with those strikes, but you see, just at this point in the match, who has the more power? behind their offense because Lycos's blows apparently not having much effect at all but every one of Hayato's of Hayato excuse me seems to be getting its mark exactly Lycos trying to change plans he's up in the pace as I said Lycos trying to get back to that type of match where he's more comfortable he's knocked Hayato into the corner crowd getting behind CCK of which Kid Lycos, of course, is a part and goes to the ropes to Tilton Well. Heads in the takedown. Wow, using his whole body weight to push Hayata's throat down across that middle rope. Crowd trying to give Kid Lycos that second wind he needs, or at least to maintain it. Lycos. Caught though, Hayata so good at getting himself back into these contests at a moment's notice. But Lycos is on the top here. He lured Hayata in. And there's the tornado DDT from Lycos. Lycos to go to the semi finals. No, right shoulder of Hayata goes up and the match goes on.
Rykos needs to stay on this. I know he's obviously fatigued at this point, but opportunities like this against Hayata don't come along very often in a match here. Looking for the brain buster is Lycos. He uses that need as Hayata to escape from that. Lycos lands on the apron. Lycos catches Hayata, didn't get all of it, but he may have got enough to cover. The leg is hooked and Hayata out on two. Great action in this fourth quarter final, as we've seen in all three of those previous tournament matches. Lycos feeling the energy here in this Lion's Den environment in Unit 9. It's a kip up from Hayata. Hayata counter. Leaping Enziguri around the back of the head of Kid Lycos. On my both feet of Hayata thrusting in midair into Kid Lycos, sends him back into the turnbuckle here. And Hayata placing Lycos in position, gets a moonsault, the cover by Hayata, and oh, Lycos got out. Hayata has used that moonsault but some of the best junior heavyweights on the planet away. It was not enough to put away Kid Lycos. Hayata still in control, or is he? Lycos lands on his feet behind him. Again, they exchange blows. This time, Lycos looks like there's a little bit more force behind them. Hayata, though, takes control. The super kick attempt fails, and oh my! Right into the face of Hayata, that strike from Lycos. This time, he'll go for the brain buster. Can he get it? No, Hayata goes behind. If that brain buster hit, then Lycos was headed to the semi final. The low blow from Hayata. Referee saw nothing. And Lycos is out cold. Hayata with the cover and a kick out. A kick out by Kid Lycos. Justice is done. What an absolute travesty. If Kid Lycos had lost because of that. Hayata took a shortcut there with the low blow. And Lycos may have used those last few drops of energy he had left to kick out there. Does Lycos have anything left in the tank? The charge from Hayata, no one there. Lycos was able to move out of the way, probably on instinct alone. Lycos giving us everything he's got here. This is what it means to him to be the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. Lycos. Repeated forearms. Hayata will go to the ropes. Oh my, Chris Brooks! Turn around, it's fair play as far as Brooks is concerned. Lycos, brain buster with the assist from Brooks. Lycos going to the semi-finals. No, he's not. Oh no, he's not. How on earth, how on earth did Hayata get out of that? Lycos will look for the moonsault. No one there. Super kick right into the face of Lycos. Oh, and a Frankensteiner. The cover from Hayata, and Hayata advances to the semi finals. Here is your winner, advancing to the semi finals, Hayata! What a match! What a match between Hayata and Kid Lycos. But ultimately, Hayata joins Daisuke Harada as the second representative of Pro Wrestling Noah in the semi-finals of this one night tournament and indeed it will be Harada versus Hayata in that second semi-final so there will be one representative from IPW and one from Pro Wrestling Noah in the finals of this tournament later tonight, but will it be Hayata who represents his country and his company in that final? We will find out a little bit later on.
All right. Well, as Hayata heads to the back, we are going to take a 15-minute break here. Don't go anywhere if you are watching us all around the world on Facebook Live. We will be back in 15 minutes' time with the semi-finals and final of this one-night tournament to crown the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. Welcome back to the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Live around the world from Milton Keynes, where it is semi-final time. The following contest is a semi-final match in the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Introducing first, representing IPW, this is Ben Bastard! Well, it's been a night of surprises already here in Unit 9, and this one may be the biggest surprise of all. With no disrespect to Ben Bastard, but for this rookie, a product of the IPW Academy to have got past Pro Wrestling Noah's Yohei in the quarterfinals is something that I don't think many people here were expecting. Nonetheless, Basden in the semi-finals and finds himself potentially just two victories away from championship gold. James Castle with a hard-fought victory over Tadasuke in his quarter-final match. And crucially, this could be important here. James Castle's match was after Ben Bazden. So Bazden has had that extra 15 minutes or so to recover. And given how intense both of those opening round matches were you've got to wonder whether that could be a difference maker Basden with the jump attack on Castle Castle knows how to fight and Castle not gonna allow that sneak attack from Basden to put him off his game for very long Basden with a kick right into the spine of Castle Trying to wrench the neck of Castle. The Castle is up to his feet and a big right forearm into the side of the head of Basden. Castle clearly fired up here after that quarter final win. Both of these men will no doubt be flying high in the confidence stakes. This an all IPW semi-final. The other semi-final, of course, all pro wrestling Noah. So there will be one UK representative and one Japanese representative in the final, guaranteed. Basden covering up here as that boot of Castle again doing some damage. Basden sent hard into that turnbuckle, forehead first. Castle off the ropes and Castle! The knee to the head, that could be enough to knock Basden out. Castle with the cover. Didn't hook the leg, Basden somehow got out of that, but Basden may have had his brain scrambled by that knee strike from Castle. Basden fighting back, look at this from the youngster. Basden, like a pit bull here. Front face lock is so viciously applied, but Castle matching that intensity with those shoulder thrusts to, to free himself. Let's go, Castle! 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 Let's go, Castle!
crowd very much behind the anarchist. James Castle. He scoops up Basden and slams him down. And that self-confidence, that cockiness that characterized Basden in his quarterfinal and, and in the early part of this match seems to be ebbing away here as Castle pressing home that advantage with his repeated elbows and stomping the head again. And Basden is going to be lucky if he doesn't have a, a concussion after this. Kick out again on two. Castle with that notoriously short temper needs to be careful. He doesn't get frustrated by these repeated kickouts from Basden who's now taking advantage as he's trying to twist that ankle of Castle. Castle trying to break that grip and succeeds. Trying to get some feeling back into that left ankle after that vicious attempt at twisting it from Basden. Again that cocky look on the face of Basden finally returning to him. Basden gonna give Castle a receipt for that forearm. And now they're gonna exchange chops. Well, Basden already on the receiving end of some chops from Yohei earlier. Yohei arguably coming out the better from that exchange, so. Castle with a chop that echoes around Unit 9 here in Milton Keynes. Indeed, it probably echoed around the world on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us wherever you are on planet Earth this evening. Joining us for this historic night, the first IPW show of 2019, as we look towards crowning a new junior heavyweight champion before we go off the air this evening. Okay, he's trying to manipulate the joints here. Basden, left arm, and now trying to twist the head of Castle around. Little arse, though, maybe this is a slight rookie mistake from Basden to be focusing so heavily on that left arm. And James Castle's finisher is the nail bomb, that running knee. It, if anything, the knee that is the, or the leg at least, that is the, the primary weapon in Castle's arsenal. Basden measures him, big kick again into the back. All that seems to have done is annoyed Castle. Those chops from the Anarchist are quite something. No doubt who the crowd favourite is here. Basden in his short career so far yet to win himself many fans. His attitude has seen to that as Castle again goes to the lateral press, gets another two count. the neck of Basden as Basden did to him a few moments earlier. Castle again puts the boot down onto the, the cranium, the head of Basden. Basden with a shot almost to match that of Castle. Just like that, the pendulum swings again. Basden now the man in control, and here's that arrogance of youth for Bazin as he kicks arrogantly at the face of Castle, now picking him up. Body slam from Bazin. Again, using that mohawk to his advantage, as we saw being a problem for Castle earlier. There's a, the PK, the cover. Kick out on two and a half from Castle, but Basden is getting closer to that goal on a night when young Ben Basden looking to shock the world by winning this eight-man one-night tournament. It's the PK again, but Castle this time grabs the leg. Basden in trouble. 
That left leg in the arms of Castle. Knee right into the temple of Bazden. How many strikes has Bazden taken to the head now? Bazden tried to charge in. Castle more than equal to that challenge. Got the boot up. Bazden missed him in the corner. Castle following up. There's the butterfly suplex right into that bottom turnbuckle. Castle feeding off the energy of this crowd. Up on the top turnbuckle, nearly lost his balance. And maybe that slight hesitation as he lost his balance was enough for Bazden to get out of there. Bazden looking for the submission. Castle kicks him away. Castle rolls back onto his feet. That's a nail bomb. The nail bomb from, from Castle. The cover. And he got him. James Castle heads to the finals. Here is your winner. It may well be the night of the anarchist. James Castle has reached a point where it's two down and one to go. The crowd cheering on James Castle as he has one more obstacle to clear. Will it be Harada? or Hayata in the final of the Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament for James Castle. Well, we will find out right now because we are headed straight into our second semi-final. Daisuke Harada, Harada against Hayata, two men who know each other very, very well indeed. They are friends and allies in pro wrestling Noah, but tonight only one of them can get a chance at that championship in the final against James Castle. <laughs> ben Bazden's walking out of here. He still doesn't know where he is. And we are getting ready to start this next match. It's been knocked silly by Castle. Here we go, second semi-final time here in Milton Keynes. The following contest is a semi-final match in the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Introducing first, representing Pro Wrestling Noah, Hayata! Big win of course for Hayata in that fourth quarter final against Kid Lycos. You mentioned earlier in that last match how the advantage may have been with Bazden for having longer to recover. That turned out not to be the case, but that advantage even more pronounced for Hayata. He was in the fourth quarter final. His opponent was only in the first quarter final. So Harada, of course, with the advantage, he has had much, much longer to rest than has Hayata. Will that send the three-time GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion into the finals for the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship? We are about to find out. And his opponent, also representing Pro Wrestling Noah, Daisuke Harada in that first match beat Chris Ridgeway as Hayata not giving him any time to recover here. Hayata may be knowing, given what I said about that lesser recovery time that Hayata has had, he knows he needs to take the fight to Harada from the get-go here and make this match as short as possible because you've got to think the longer this goes, the more it favours Harada given that recovery time. Breaking the eyes of his pro wrestling Noah stable mate. They are opponents tonight though. Sarada with the shoulder block sends Hayata to the outside. 
Both of these guys have spent much of their career around each other. Both of them started out in Osaka Pro Wrestling. Harada is a two-time heavyweight champion in that promotion. Of course, nowadays, both of them signed to Pro Wrestling Noah. As Hayata will roll Harada back in here. And make no mistake about it, back in the locker room somewhere, the anarchist James Castle is looking on with great interest as to who his opponent will be in this historic final later on. Demonic smile from Hayata as he picked up Harada there. Harada though, fighting back and for the first time tonight we're seeing an exchange of forearms followed by an uppercut from Harada. Harada falls victim to that inverted atomic drop by the kick into the head and a kip up from Hayata who to his credit is showing no signs of fatigue after that match with Kid Lycos went for the cover and got a two count. Harada now being tied up in the ropes here. Referee needs to call for the break. He's wrenching that jaw backwards. Nayata doesn't seem particularly intimidated by the authority of the referee. Again on the ropes and drops the leg across the back of Harada's head. Hayata with the running kick onto the ring apron. As we're seeing, he's a man who will bend those rules as far as they will go without breaking. As Harada falls victim to a, another pin attempt but kicks out on two. Harada is in a lot of trouble here in Hayata. This game plan of his to come out all guns blazing from the opening bell seems to have paid dividends. Hayata is going to head to the ropes. Hayata gets hip tossed over the top from Harada. Harada with the baseball slide sends Hayata hard into those crowd barriers. And Harada over the top lands on Hayata. What a night we are having here in Milton Keynes as this second semi-final proceeds here. Yeah, we are actually back in Milton Keynes tomorrow night as well for a TV taping. If you want tickets for that, there are some still available at ringsideworld.co.uk. If you can't make it to Milton Keynes tomorrow, but you are enjoying what you're seeing here tonight on Facebook Live, then don't forget we will also be on the Fight Network UK with those taped episodes from tomorrow night in the very near future as Harada heads to the ropes and he's taking control here. Hayata misses with the clothesline. Harada sends him down. Harada with Hayata on his shoulders. Sends him to the ropes. Down a little early, maybe. Hayata held onto the legs, looking for the sunset flip and set the double foot stomp from Harada. Yeah. Suplex into the cover with the bridge. The left shoulder goes up for Hayata. And this one playing out, perhaps as we expected. As I said, if Hayata could get this done early, then. That may have been his best chance, but as this one goes on, you're seeing Harada taking more and more control of the increasingly exhausted Hayata. I say exhausted, there's the handspring into the back elbow. Well, don't write Hayata off yet. Hayata with a roar of determination. That sit out slam on Harada. He's got all his body weight on the shoulders and Harada Kicked out, but only just. Regardless of who wins this, it's been a tremendous showcase for 
Pro Wrestling know as we look for the moonsault here, the knees of Harada go up, that is how well Harada knows Hayana, he's got him tied up and he almost made it to the finals right there. Instead though, a strike from Harada has once more knocked the wind out of Hayata. Harada measuring his opponent here. Harada got caught with the arm drag. And look at this now from, from Hayata. The crucifix pin attempt, the shoulders are down and then he, no, no, no. Judgment call by the ref, that could easily have been deemed a three count. Victory roll from Harada. He leans back again and that was how. He got the win in his opening contest against Chris Ridgway. It wasn't quite enough to get it done against Hayata. And now the super kick as the discus lariat attempt from Harada. Unsuccessful. Hayata looking for the Frankensteiner that he used to win his match earlier. Instead though, Harada gets caught. Or does he? No, he doesn't. Hayata, Hayata, Hayata. Oh, and that was even closer. My goodness. Oh, look at that German suplex, he got it! The Katayama German suplex from Harada is enough to take him to the finals! Here is your winner, advancing to the final, Daisuke Harada! So the finals of this championship tournament will see James Castle of IPW against Daisuke Harada of Pro Wrestling Noah. One of those two men will walk out of here tonight having bested seven others to become the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. Big, big win over Harada for his friend and compatriot Hayata Harada advances to the final. And Harada now going to have to recuperate and get, get ready for the anarchist James Castle in the final. Well, we're going to take another brief break from our tournament. It is time for six-man tag team action, but a lot of mystery surrounding this match. We do not know the identity of one of the two teams. Let's take it to our ring announcer, Chris Hatch, and find out more. Synonymous with IPW, going to captain this team. Cayman and OJMO. Oh my! Well, we didn't know who the opponents were going to be for Star's team, but that siren sounds awfully familiar. Deputy 
Capitan Joe Nelson, the anti-fund police on patrol here in Milton Keynes. They have earned the grudging respect of the IPW faithful over the past year. But who is their partner? There's only two of them. This is a six-man tag. I think if that music tells me what I think it does, we just got our answer. Filthy, gorgeous Rob Sharp. Another man who had a very eventful 2018 here in IPW. Spent much of the year, of course, as a tag team champion alongside Jack Sexsmith. Sexsmith turning against Sharp, betraying him at Undisputed just before Christmas. So Sharp finds himself unexpectedly turning a new page in his career at the start of 2019. So we're getting ready for six-man tag team action then. And it looks like Oaksmo is going to be squeezed out of here. David Starr insisting as captain of the team that he is going to start things out. Bell rings. It's going to be Starr and Sharp at the beginning here. If that eight-man tag we saw earlier this evening is anything to go by, then expect the unexpected in another multi-man tag team match here tonight in Unit 9. We talked about him a little bit earlier as well. He was uh, scheduled to go one on one with James Castle in what would have been a third match in their series at Undisputed just before the end of 2018. But injury forcing Star out of that match, and with that ongoing rivalry with Castle, you've got to think it must be eating away at David Star that Castle. Is about to compete in the final of tonight's eight-man tournament. Very even battle here in the opening moments between filthy Rob Sharp and the Jewish cannon David Starr. It is Starr who gets shoulder blocked to the canvas by the bigger man Rob Sharp. He's caught him. Oh, and Sharp, what's he doing? Oh. Countered by, by Star. Sharp hesitated. Star nearly took advantage with the inside cradle. Here we go. Both men crisscrossing on the ropes. A Lufez press from Star trying to hold those arms down to force the pin. And Sharp got out on two. Star giving him no respite whatsoever, though. Into the corner. They collide. And Sharp trying to regain the initiative here. But. Collide again, this time collision of heads and it's going to be Joe Nelson in there against OJMO. Looking for the half crab maybe. Instead it's Nelson kicking his way free. Running forearm from Nelson. Great speed from this youngster. Irish whip into the corner. Nelson lands on his feet on the apron. Kicks Ozma right around the back of the head. And a springboard twisting cross body from Nelson. The Chief Deputy Dunn was showing his approval there. Dunn is now the legal man as he hits that backbreaker. Dunn is directing traffic. Nelson. From the wheelbarrow into a senton splash. 
crushing the ribs of his opponent. And here comes Miles Kamen. I think there's some confusion about whether a legal tag was made. Referee sticking to the letter of the law here, but it is Kamen who's in there. The double end Zaguri's and the anti fun police and the shoulder of uh, Kamen goes up on two to keep his team in this. David Starr on the apron, as always, with plenty to say to the official and to his opponents. As Kamen gets sent to the rope multiple times here by Dunn. Kitchen sink from Dunn and Dunn is uh, in control here of Miles Kamen. Good agility there from Kamen though. The leapfrog over Dunn. And twisting springboard back elbow from Miles Kamen. Kamen, another one of those young lions here in IPW who believe that 2019 could be their year. And the more eccentric side of, of Dunn coming to the forehead. I mean, Kamen seems to think that it's an actual gun. It's like a, like a Mexican standoff here. Well, this madness has descended on Unit 9. Star has caught the gun. I can't believe I'm saying that. I think it looks like Nelson may have been shot. Jo Joe Nelson may have been shot by this imaginary gun. Well, this is, this is insane. Well, this match has stopped dead in its tracks because of an imaginary shooting. Only in IPW, eh? I think Nelson has been kicked back into life. It's one form of first aid. It's Kamen and Nelson in there anyway. The uppercut from Kamen, who certainly carries himself very well. He's much like some of the men we've seen in the, uh, the tournament tonight. Ben Baston in particular. Not in any way lacking confidence for someone so early in his career. The tag was made to OJMO. He's going to leap in over the top. Head colliding with the midsection of Nelson for a two count. Star tags himself back in. Star is head first into that abdomen of Nelson. He's already suffered a lot. Look at that chop. That did sound like a bullet. Oh my god. Nelson writhing in pain. Star goes for a third one. David Star with the hat trick of chops on Joe Nelson. Trying to push those shoulders down, but it's not enough to keep him down for the three count. Getting the frequent tags by Star's team. Drop kick from OJMO. Working on that left leg of Nelson, that is smart because Nelson, we've seen how fast he can be, how agile. If you take away his legs, you take away that motor that powers that offense. And Star disagreeing with his teammate about the importance of him applying this half crab. A forearm to the face from OJMO to Chief Deputy Dunn. This has been a unique six-man tag team match right from the opening moments as Nelson lands on his feet. It is Nelson who has taken the bulk of the punishment for his team. He needs the tag and he gets it to Rob Sharp. 
his forearms from Sharp. Hey man, OGMO in trouble here. Tag team partners sent into each other by Sharp. Oh, he's throwing these guys from pillar to post. Oh my God. What impact from the former tag team champion. A deadlift German suplex. Kamen now. Maybe in some trouble. Lands on his feet behind Sharp. He's going to tag in Star. Star gets a boot up into the face. David Star. Getting so fast is Star. Tremendous amount of gymnastic ability on display in between these six as Star gets sent into the ropes. It's a 619 from Chief Deputy Dunn as Dunn launches himself. Nelson! The Valley Driver from Joe Nelson to pick up a surprise win over Star and Star doesn't let it happen. Counted on by Nelson was looking for the suplex. Instead, his head dropped on the knee. Huge lariat from Star. Star. What is it from David Star? The pile driver from Star. The cover from the Jewish cannon, and that will be enough. Here are your winners, the team of the OJMO, Miles Kamen and David Starr. Impressive win here for David Starr. But his night might be about to get a lot worse if he sees his arch rival, James Castle, in just a few moments, potentially becoming the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. Joe Nelson took an inhuman amount of punishment, including apparently being shot at one point in this six-man tag team match. But it is David Starr, Miles Kamen, and the OJMO, who eventually Pick up the win. David Starr continuing where he left off in 2018. One of the most dominant forces in IPW is David Starr as he leads his team to victory tonight. But we have one more piece of business to take care of as Starr and his team make their way Back to the locker room area. We are about to make history. We are down to two. Daisuke Harada, James Castle. Only one of those two men can make history. Rewriting those history books tonight in Milton Keynes as the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. No, wait, what is it? Well, now hang on now. Well, this. What is going on? Well, these guys aren't meant to be here whatsoever. The disruption here. This is supposed to be our main event. What? Why on earth? Sammy Smooth, Lewis Howie, Mike Bird. Why? Why are they here? No, no. Sex Smith, what's he doing here? I will prove to you all that I am the very best on this microphone, on social media, and in this ring. And you, I invite to enjoy the ride. Who does Sex Smith think he is? You, I invite you to join me. You see, Samuel, you don't quite cut the 
last minute round. Last month for Undisputed, I didn't lose to Rob Sharp. You cost me against Rob Sharp. You are and have always been the Marty Jannetty of this tag team for me. Oh, wow. And I don't like to waste my time with the inferior. Nah, uh, uh, you, you have potential. You could be great. You'll never be as good as me, but you could be something quite special. So what's it gonna be? Are you gonna ride with me? Or are you happy to languish in the sphere of years as part of some mediocre tag team that they will never remember? What is that? Yeah. Well, hang on. Sexsmith! Jack Sexsmith attacking Sammy Smooth. What is he? He's trying to split up this tag team of Smooth and Howley. with a slap to Smooth at the direction of Sex Smith. What have we just witnessed? Sex Smith offering a hand to this Zach Morris wannabe, Lewis Howley. Howley and Sexsmith walking out of here after an assault on Sammy Smooth. I have no idea what that was all about. Well, Jack Sexsmith. I'm stunned here. Sexsmith has split up this team of Lewis Howley and Sammy Smooth, and Howley chose Sexsmith over Smooth. Well, as Sammy Smooth makes his way out of here, we are, hopefully now, we are going to have our main event, the first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion to be crowned. Let's take it up to our ring announcer, Chris Hatch, and get things underway. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is your main event of the evening. It is a singles match set for one fall. And is the final in the tournament to crown the first IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. Can we please have both wrestlers to the ring? The waiting is over. We started with eight. Now there are only two. And one of them, as I said, about to make history. Here he is, the three-time GHC Junior Heavyweight Champion. Already had two grueling matches here tonight, Daisuke Harada, but he has to do one more if he's gonna leave with the title. The Anarchist representing IPW and the last great hope if you like of keeping that IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship in UK hands well, let's take it up to our ring announcer for the official introductions at this time I would like to bring to the ring ready to present the belt to the winner of this contest he is a British wrestling legend Doug Williams! Well, Doug Williams 
who of course himself spent much of his career known as the anarchist. Is he about to pass that torch in the form of passing a championship belt to James Castle? Or will it be Daisuke Harada who is able to claim championship gold here? Doug Williams, of course, retiring at the end of 2018. Great to see Doug here and looking in great shape as well as Doug Williams is going to show off that brand new IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship belt. The official photographs are over. And with that, Doug Williams leaves the ring. Introducing first, to my right, representing Pro Wrestling Noah, Daisuke Hara! And his opponent, to my left, representing IPW, this is the anarchist, James Castle! Introductions done. James Castle. Daisuke Harada. An international showdown for the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship. Who will be the first name to be associated with this brand new championship? Harada with victories already tonight over Chris Ridgway in the quarterfinals, Hayata in the semis, James Castle beat Tadasuke in the quarterfinals, and then Ben Basden in the semis. So in many ways an equally difficult route to the final for both men. There is no doubt that Harada's Greater recovery time helped him against Hayata. He does not have that advantage here. Harada was in the second semi-final. So he has had the least recuperation time as we get underway. Exchanging forearms, the sweat flying off both of these guys' bodies in the opening moments. And if in those quarters and semi-finals, pacing was important, remembering that you might have more matches to come, that obviously goes out of the window here. Both of these men can leave it all on the line in this final match, knowing that they are just potentially three short seconds away from winning the championship. Well, they shook hands again, the hands are still linked and they're still hitting each other. This is unique forearm after forearm with the hand still linked. One of the more aggressive handshakes you're ever likely to see. Harada runs into the knee of Castle. The Anarchist looking to claim the title. Gets an early two count here. All four of the matches that we've seen these two guys in so far went well over the 10 minute mark. Just wonder whether there is some potential for this one to go shorter given the fatigue, given not just the physical fatigue, but the mental effort expended by both of these guys. Will it be shorter into the match when one of them makes a fatal mistake? Elbows from Castle. Another cover, another kick out for Harada. Already talked about his three reigns, totaling almost 700 days with the GHC Junior Heavyweight title over in 
pro wrestling Noah. He's also been a three-time junior heavyweight tag team champion. He won the Global Junior Heavyweight League in 2015. So these kind of tournament environments are more than familiar to Harada as Castle gets another two count. He's already beaten a couple of tournament specialists here tonight. Notably Chris Ridgway, of course, who won the Super 8 tournament here in IPW last year. Castle with evil intentions, apparently for Harada. And Harada lost his balance there. Castle putting the boot in. Referee trying to reason with Castle, saying you can't beat him on the outside. Forearm exchanges again, this time with the stakes even higher, given it's on the ring apron. Harada, the Death Valley driver, the shoulders and head of Castle bouncing off that hard ring apron. Harada sends Castle into the crowd. Dangerous situation for all involved. Man, what is he doing now? Well, he's moved that. Hang on a second. Harada has moved that crowd barrier out of the way. He's back on the apron. If I, if he's doing what I think he's doing, yeah, Harada is going to the top turnbuckle. Harada going to the top turnbuckle. Castle's in the crowd. For goodness sake! For goodness sake! Harada takes out James Castle in the crowd. My God, how much does it mean? to Harada to win this title that he would take a risk like that. <laughs> Referee has a count on. Now what happens if we get a double count out here? Then what happens to the title? <laughs> Referee's up to a count of three. Fortunately, both men are moving. They need to obviously get back into the ring as quickly as they can. And Harada does throw Castle back in, follows him in, and we hopefully are going to get a winner inside the ring. Back to their corners, and Harada charges. Harada. Elbow. Got a clothesline. Second time. Leaping forearm from Harada takes Castle down. Northern Lights suplex again, again with the bridge, the cover. A kick out from Castle, keeps him alive. Harada. Off the ropes. Kicks the arm of Castle. Knee right to the side of the head. And a brain buster from Castle. The Anarchist to become Junior Heavyweight Champion! No, no, no! It was milliseconds, but sometimes this is a game of milliseconds. It's proving so for James Castle. Was that Castle's best opportunity to win this? Castle, with that torture rack position, never quite had it locked in. Harada goes behind, uses his forearm to strike Castle between the shoulder blades. Harada will run in. Castle with the kick to the back of the head. Oh my god! Double underhook, that butterfly suplex into the turnbuckle. We saw that earlier. Castle obviously now feeling the effects of three consecutive matches in a, what a, uh, a very short period of time in a single evening here in Milton Keynes. Castle! The drop kick. Most of that went into the left arm of Harada. It's got him all tied up and 
was nearly enough, but not quite. And so the tide of history turns. Castle, if things had gone just a half second different there, would now be raising the IPW Junior Heavyweight Championship. And he knows it, look. Castle, again looking for that torture act position. It's the roll up, the schoolboy roll up from Harada. Nearly took Castle by surprise, but Castle was able to get out. Castle though gets thrown into the turnbuckle. Nothing pretty about that from Harada, but it did send Castle landing awkwardly in the corner. Listen to the quick breaths of both of these guys. A real test of conditioning here. Harada has body slammed Castle down. He's got him in a position where he wants him. Harada with a diving elbow drop. Harada drops the head of Castle onto his knee. Castle may be out cold, the cover by Harada, and Castle is out again. The match goes on. Harada looking to put the exclamation point here on, on what he hopes is about to be another championship to put on his resume and not just any championship but that prestigious brand new IPW junior heavyweight title again to the top goes Harada again the diving over this time though Castle knew it was coming the knees went up there's a nail bomb the nail bomb from Castle to win the championship no oh my god James Castle for all the world thought he had done enough but Harada somehow found a way out. Castle trying to measure him again. He kicked out a one nail bomb, but no one, I mean no one, sure he can kick out a two. Oh, counter, counter by Harada. Counter by Harada, the Kaniyama German suplex, the shoulders of Castle go down and oh my god, Castle kicked out of the German suplex. The nail bomb doesn't get it done for Castle, the Kaniyama German suplex doesn't get it done for Harada. What's it going to take? Referee. Counting both men down, this time inside the ring. It could be the same outcome if neither man can meet the count of ten. Again, we'd have a stalemate. Castle is onto his hands and knees here. Harada moving as well, but we are up to six. And that strike will break the count. The number of forearm smashes to the face that both of these guys have taken in their three matches tonight is beyond counting. Forearm after forearm after forearm. Often that point of the elbow making the most impact. Oh my. Right. In the abdomen of Castle for Harada. Harada. Run to the ropes. Same place twice. That was that knocked all of the wind out of Castle. There is a little bit left. 
The rotors still turning just about for the anarchist. Going to look for that Katiyama German suplex a second time. Castle held onto the ropes. But he got caught. Will he get lifted up? No, he won't. Castle was able to shift his body weight just about. Castle runs in. And there it is, German suplex. A regular German suplex that time. Castle up to his feet straight away. Again takes another knee into the head. The discus forearm. Castle may be out cold for the championship. And Castle once more gets that shoulder off the canvas. There it is again though. The Kadiyama German suplex and that will do it. We have a brand new junior heavyweight champion. Daisuke Harada has gone through three men in a single night to become the inaugural IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion. What a night here in Milton Keynes as Doug Williams with that brand new championship belt about to award it to Pro Wrestling Noah's Daisuke Harada. James Castle gave it everything he had. As our fans here with a standing ovation for both men, there it is. The championship belt handed over to Daisuke Harada. Harada Rather than having his arm raised, wants to address James Castle. Castle offered a handshake. And Castle accepts defeat graciously. Although he does point out that he is coming for that Junior Heavyweight Championship. What a night in Milton Keynes. If you want to join us tomorrow for TV tapings, we're back here. Tickets still available at ringsideworld.co.uk as IPW 2019 kicks into high gear. But as we go off the air tonight, we have a first ever IPW Junior Heavyweight Champion, and it is Daisuke Harada.